What's up guys, it's Minx. In the last video, we uh, created a system to load levels. And by load levels, what we do is we uh, create a level object. And right now we're just programmatically creating a new instance and then coding in a bunch of level contents. We're not like reading it from a file or anything like that. That's happening over in game window on the level. When the game loads, we're doing that. We don't have a menu system or anything to like tell it when to do this stuff. So for now, it's just gonna do this. Um, in this video, or well, okay, also in the last video, we talked about moving, uh, like changing how object inheritance works for creating something like a, uh, a uh, let's say a level. So for example, right now we have test object one and test object two or test object and test object two. And we just literally copied the class over, which is cool, but not really. Cause now it's like, well, why do we have to redefine all this stuff? So what we're gonna do in this video is essentially uh, make it so that we're, we're probably going to step away from test object and make a new wall. So we're going to test this with test object and then we're going to move over to a new class and call it wall or something. And then uh, we can keep that separate from test object. So um, to do this, I did a little bit of research. It's not hard, of course. So we'll be able to get this done fairly quickly. Um, I We had to learn something called a, uh, we have to learn the virtual keyword. So the virtual keyword is used to modify a method property indexer or event declaration and allow for it to be overridden in a derived class. So when we make a uh, class here, so this is the base class, which would be our, let's say, um, test object here. So this would be our base class. Oh, that's being annoying. Um, so we would uh, make, you know, public virtual string name, private int, uh, public virtual int. So we have the internal um, or the private and then the public version. And then when we make a derived class, so for example, test object two, um, we override it. So we override name. In this case, it's overriding name. Um, it looks like it's not overriding number or anything like that. It's just using the name. Um, but we can use this principle to... Uh, make it so we can override things like, so for example, the default wall behavior is fine, but we want to change the color on this one. So we want blue, red, and a green one. So we can make really quickly three different ones. So let's go ahead and utilize this, uh, this virtual C sharp reference uh, page to sort of do what we want in our game. So if we close out of this, we don't need it open anymore. Um, First thing we want to do is pretty much get rid of all of this. So we can keep class or test object two, but we want to get rid of everything that's in it. And we want to get rid of iDynamic. We don't want to inherit from this because what will happen is when we inherit from test object, it will automatically inherit dynamic or well, not, not necessarily inherit it, but it'll, you know, the behavior is already defined. It has a base behavior. What we want to do instead is just test object. And now what this will do is say, hey, test object two needs to implement the correct constructor. Now, by default, the way the constructor is going to work for us is it's going to use the uh, constructor that comes from test object and it'll take in the game position and scale the same way it would. And we don't need to do anything else with this. So we can pretty much uh, just leave this empty. Um, we don't really need to do anything there. What we do want to do, and again, we're just doing this as an example. We can actually, uh, hold on, before we even proceed, let's hit start and take a look and see what it does. So before it was red, now it is blue. So we know that we've got it set up working. It's acting as if it is just a test object one, our normal test object. Um, so now what we want to do is make it so we can override my visual. We want to change the color. So how do we do that? Um, well, we have to make my visual virtual. We have to make it accessible. And right now, by default, it is also private. Um, we can also see that it is a field rather than a property, which is, you know, none of this works for what we do. We're changing it from a field to a property. Um, so first, we would toss virtual in front of it. And we can see that gives us an error. Why does it give us an error? Just hover over it. It's because it is a uh, field, and it wants us to make the field read-only, which is not necessarily what we want to do. Um, so let's go ahead and take this to the next step. Let's make it, we can make it public or protected. Let's do protected. What protected means is it's accessible by the class itself and by inherited classes. So test object could access it. Now we still have an error. It still says this modifier virtual is not valid. That's because again, it's a field. To make it a property, what we wanna do, get rid of this. And we can say, open it with braces. And we want to define a get, and we could also define a set, but get it defining a get's fine. Um, 
that's weird. It's acting a little goofy. Um, and we want to return the brush that we want. So if we return a new solid brush, color dot blue. And then we can actually get rid of this from the constructor because the constructor is not actually pulling anything. It's just setting it. So now what will happen is um, if we, I mean, if we start it the same, it'll act the same, right? So this will go in, make all of them blue. But what this means is we can now go into our second class here, test object and say protected. We could do protected again, it's fine. Override, so we have to call this an override because we're overriding the apparent variable. Brush, and I think it's my visual. And right now we're pointing it to base.myVisual by default because it tabbed it into base.myVisual. Figured we'd leave it. So if we point it towards that, it's basically gonna do the same exact thing. I imagine if we didn't even type that in, the compiler just auto-generates stuff like that. But what we can actually do is, uh, we can say, I, does it work like this? We'll see new solid brush color dot red. Does it work like that? That's nice. We could do it this way, um, or we could sort of uh, we might change. We might make the conventions similar to this one. Uh, we'll see. Let's go ahead and hit start. See if it changes it to red. It looks like it does change it to red for us, which is nice. Um, so I might just leave it like this. Um, but that does allow us to inherit from this without having to rewrite the entire class. It's like, okay, we just overrid visual. So, um, but we're going to, I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway, just for, you know, I guess example purposes. So instead of doing it like this, we can open it up just like the other one and do a git just like the other one and say return new solid brush color dot red. And we can hit start. And it'll be the same thing. So this works for us either way, whichever way you prefer to write it. Either way is one line, so it does look a little bit nicer. Um, but yeah, so we'll leave it this way. But this gives us a principle to set up our uh, um, our wall instead of test object. Now, test object is essentially acting as a wall. So, you know, we could just probably change this. But I also want to leave test object in here for later in case we want to add other behavior to it for testing without messing up our wall class. So what we'll do is we'll create a new, we're going to make a folder because we're going to have a lot of different uh, pieces at some point. You know, like for example, um, we have walls, maybe we want to differentiate before floors that might go in the same file though. Um, enemy spawners, special, th special things like a... Uh, a player start and a player end, um, you know, other things like that. So I'm going to do a new folder for this one and we'll call it, um, oh, maybe, maybe we should toss level in here. Um, we'll say level pieces or, eh, I'll call it level and we'll toss level.cs in there. And we're going to hit okay. Now we may get some errors here based on that because we've just changed where level is located. Let's see that game that we're going to change the namespace here to align with what it's supposed to be. It's like, not going to like that. Okay. Let's hit start. See if it works. There it goes. Okay. We have errors. Okay. So when we include, let's see, let's go ahead and right click on the error for level. Oh, okay. It's referencing the namespace. Let's fix this. Let's change the, uh, Older. Um man. Uh we'll say levels because this would be referencing all our levels. Um, which is kind of stupid. I kind of feel bad. Change this. Now it's hit start. We should get different errors this time because we're not referencing levels. But here we go. It's not existing. So when we so we want to use the using statement that allows us to use these without having to say um game dot levels dot level dot level block for example that's stupid um so if we use the correct using statement that puts us all the way in there to game dot levels that'll work but now that we've done that we can go ahead and add a new item and i'm just going to call it wall dot cs now wall's pretty much going to be very similar to our current test object so we're going to get some uh stuff from over there but we're probably going to do a little bit of reformatting so firstly we definitely want the wall let's get out of level here um, wall to I inherit from i dynamic, and we may change this to like an i static or something like that because we want it to draw and handle collision. That's pretty much else or pretty much it. And dynamic might handle something like update or something. And test object does 
have that. Let's see. Position scale. I think iDynamics only doing over to iDynamics, actually. Um, draw update. Yeah, because we can get rid of like update, for example, on something that's static, like a wall would be. Um, however, if we're doing a base wall, um, it might need to be dynamic. Eh. Eh, we'll see. Let's go ahead and implement the interface. Implement um, all. Actually, before we do that, let's uh, let's just take essentially what I didn't or what test objects doing for these top things, because these are correct. So here, because we want position and scale to point towards our position and scale without having to uh, do anything wonky there. So that's good. Going back to test object, we need draw and update. We do need to implement them. We don't actually need to do anything with them. And let's see. That's good. That's good. All right. Going back. That's pretty much it. We need the constructor, of course. Let's go ahead and make the constructor real quick. Let's toss this right here. Hide those. Say public wall, and that's it. So right now, the only customizable thing about the wall, technically with uh, inherited members, is the color. Is there anything else? So technically, so I say the only customizable thing. Um, technically, the width, height, location, and scale. Technically, everything's customizable. But when we inherit, the only thing that can be changed on an inherited object is the how it looks. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. And we could probably make draw, let's see here, my rectangle. So let's see, can we make these just virtual? Virtual void draw. Yep. And public virtual. The reason I want to make these virtual is if the sub or if the inheritees, I guess it would be inheritors, um, would reference it uh, or could override draw and update. Let's say we don't want to draw or we don't want to call, um, we don't want to call it like this. Maybe we want to do something else or maybe we want to do something else on draw method on top of this. So we would say base dot draw and then you know do whatever else we want or something. Um, so. We'll leave those as overrides uh, or virtual because we want to be able to override them. And I think that's pretty much it. So let's stop doing test objects in our thing and do wall. So let's do a onload. I want to do type of wall. And we're going to leave test object two for now. But we're going to test this out and see what happens. Just make sure it works. Okay. Instructor on type game with no engine tutorial dot game dot levels dot wall is not found. Okay. Let's see why. Public wall. I ran into this issue earlier, uh, but I didn't like it wasn't a big deal. Oh, I know what the issue is. These uh these are probably not right. We have game rect hold on, how does test object? Toss this to the side here. So test object takes a game, a position, and a scale. That's my bad. So the reason the constructor couldn't be found is because the constructor is set up incorrectly. This dot my rectangle does not equal to this dot rectangle. Rectangle is set on draw. Set when it's needed. It's not set ahead of time. That should fix it. It's my bad. Hit continue. We're gonna stop. Now I hit start. And okay, so we're falling. So this means they aren't spawning. Why aren't they spawning? Let's see. So wall is, is it because this is not getting called? Let's see. Is it because we made it virtual? Um, wall is drawing. Okay. 
Okay, wall is not being drawn. Let's go ahead. Oh, well, of course it's not being drawn. I know why it's not. Excuse me. We forgot to, uh, or I forgot to register it. If you caught that, awesome. Um, I am an idiot. So well, let's go ahead and pop open test object real quick and grab our this.game.register dynamic object, this. I really hate calling a wall a dynamic object when it does not move at all. There we go. Okay, our wall is now drawing. We got all of this done. So now that this is all set, we can um, go ahead and get rid of the uh, same. We can do the same thing for our, we'll say, uh, wall. And now with walls, I mean, with this, we kind of want to follow the same principles we would anything else. Like the class name should make sense. Although we're not really defining a bunch of new behavior or anything like that, we may want to say, hey, this is a blue wall for example if we're, when we start adding like textures and stuff and we want like a, a block of dirt or a block of grass or wood or stone or something like that to put in a specific spot like based on the texture it's like hey um here's the name of the class this is stone block you know <laughs> so or stone wall or something like that so we'll say internal class blue wall inherits from wall and we should do the uh, right click here because I, I don't like typing that all. Generate the constructor. And what we'll say is for this one, I know I kind of like did it for the other one, but since we're only uh, um, doing the uh, color for this test object to here, um, we want to take the protected override brush. I th do we call it visual? Call it my visual? Yep. Um, equals greater than. New solid brush, and we'll do color dot. Uh, oh, color dot red. We'll call this red wall instead of blue wall. And make sure you change your constructor name to align with that. Um, and it'll automatically do the base. So when we create it, it'll create at the. Uh, uh, it'll do what it needs to do there. We don't have to redefine that behavior. Um, and this bugs the heck out of me. The fact that it's more than one line, but it's not actually doing anything. Um, behavior is good just want to put a comment in there um, change color of this particular class to red when spawned okay so now let's go ahead and head back over to our game window and let's change B to red wall so now it should be the same thing. It'll look like we haven't really done anything. And I mean, to a degree, we haven't really done anything. We copied and pasted the test object over to wall, defined the same exact behavior, mostly copy and paste, and we did it. Um, but we updated to inheritance to allow for future, uh, I guess, to understand how to do it and to uh, update things e uh, more easily in the future. So if we were to define another wall, we could start defining walls with textures and stuff like that or different behavior fairly easy um let's go ahead and actually do a like public virtual uh let's say a, not a public but a but it could be public we could override um uh, public override override um it'll be void update and we'll say base that update and what we'll do is say console dot right line the inherited behavior is being called and now so that's happening first so we're going to say that happens first in this case and then the this will be the inheritor uh inheritor is calling this after the base um, the base method is called. I guess that would be the best way to write that without being grammatically wrong um, or you know relatively normal. So let's go ahead and hit start and we should see that um, let's see that's interesting. So it's calling so the inherited behavior is being called and that's like calling the inheritor behavior afterwards like every so often curious if there's a reason for that let's see i just want to see how often or how frequently this is called 
mean, it seems relatively fast. Just want to make sure there's no like performance issues here before we uh, leave this in. We don't have. I mean, we're not doing anything like this with update right now. Like actually, um, I can't tell if it's faster or slower. It's covered up. It seems to be significantly faster on the inherited behavior. Um, so it might be a good idea to leave some of uh at, to leave out functionality on the inheritor, but we'll see. Um, so. We'll comment this stuff out, um, and actually we can get rid of this method, the override down here, because the override's not actually overriding anything. So, um, but for now, this is good. So this is how inheritance works. It's fairly similar to, uh, um, what do you call it, interfaces, except the difference is we don't have to implement stuff. It takes the behavior that is set by the base class, and we can modify that behavior to be what our specific class wants. So we define one class that does 90% of the work, and then the other 10% that is specific to a particular object. Instead of doing a bunch of if statements, we just spawn the object that does what we want to do. So we don't spawn wall and say spawn wall of this color. No, no, no. We say spawn this particular wall, and this wall's color is red, so that's going to spawn a red wall. Um, so that's pretty much it. Test object is likely going to be changed over to something else later. You know, I'll probably change to maybe the next thing we do is like a um, a spawner type. Um, in the next video, we're going to start working on like a menu, uh, like a basic menu. So we're going to do buttons and stuff like that. Um, and we're going to give the ability, you know, we're going to create like a, you know, when you open up the game, you see start, exit, and then after you hit start, it's like, you know, select the level. Or maybe by default right now, our start button just loads into our test level. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, anyway, thank you for watching. Have a great day.